Hey there, so uh, what you're looking at here is a system that I just put together. It, it can consists of an i7 3770S, 16 gigs of RAM, RX 570, 4GB edition, GB OS actually, RGB edition, and then you have a 120GB SSD with a half terabyte uh, storage hard drive in the back, and uh, a thermal take case that came with three RGB fans and a dark flash uh, heap, a CPU cooler. I actually named this PC the Dark Flash, and uh, I think it's a pretty cool name. Uh, definitely looks cool. And uh, I just was bored and I wanted to put together a system that I feel I could uh, play, you know, modern titles at a pretty good frame rate and, and graphical quality settings. So I uh, did that, and now we'll just be looking at a couple titles here nothing too comprehensive this won't look like uh, hardware in box or gamers nexus or anything like that but we'll be looking at three gaming titles and we'll also be doing a, a general uh, CPU benchmark too so just having some fun here let's see uh, how she performs Our first benchmark is Cinebench R15. It scored a 587, which is a good score, but not fantastic. It, fantastic. it does go to show that it has a pretty good base as far as multi-threaded processing goes. And this will come in handy when we're you know, dealing with our games to follow. So uh, yeah, not too much to say there. The temps were pretty good too. It never went above 65 uh, degrees, which that's what I would expect from a, a NES class processor. Uh, or an S variant, so it turboed around 3,500 megahertz on the base on the overclock, not the overclock, but the boost clock on all cores. So a uh, pretty balanced, pretty solid performance from this processor. So the first AAA title that we'll be looking at is Apex Legends. Uh, I actually hooked this up to my big screen and I played with a remote controller or a, a, a traditional controller so uh, don't judge my gameplay right here but basically I tried the best I could to run across the map and get a good representation of the environments uh, it's definitely easy to find um, I guess easy to run you know sections of the map so I wanted to make this scene you know, as representative as I could uh, 75 frames per second you know, it's what we averaged here at the highest settings. And uh, when I switched it to 720p or 720p low, we actually averaged uh, around 115 frames per second. So um, take your pick. You know, if you want the higher frames. Personally, now being more competitive, I want the higher frames. But whichever you choose, you can't really go wrong. Definitely performs well in this title. Our second AAA is Jurassic World Evolution. This is basically a roller coaster tycoon sort of dinosaur theme park game. Actually, it's very, very well done. The animation is pretty amazing, regardless of the graphical settings. What you see up here is actually 1080p low, and I'll explain why. So, I ran it 1080p high at the high at the ultra preset actually, and. Uh, pretty much tour to one of my islands and I averaged around it's 53 frames per second there and it looked good and it looked you know looked amazing of course and the system was pretty stable not very many skips and then this the stress the CPU side of things more I switched it to 1080p low and I switched to an island that had more dinosaurs now um, I only saw a 60 frame per second average on this one and it might be due just to having you know more things to render, and um, it could uh, could point to a CPU bottleneck. What I should have done is switch to a roller, lower resolution, and I suspect that would have saw you know higher a higher average of course. But this is a pretty CPU intensive game, and that's the reason I like to use it when I'm you know testing a new system out. Uh, I run this on my MSI gaming laptop, and it has like a seventh gen. Uh, i7 in there and it sees pretty good utilization there you know usually it seems between 70 90 
percent across eight threads so definitely well optimized game looks gorgeous at high or low settings can't go wrong with it if you're a dinosaur freak like me our last title we'll look at is wolfenstein 2 colossus and uh i actually picked the uh revolution stage in the battle simulator uh, section uh, a very repeatable stage they can run through and actually the hardest to run with all the flashes flamethrowers the the panzer you know uh, machine dog thing but um actually i just kept the flamethrower going on every pass i made with this game and at the highest quality settings titled mein lieben it averaged between 30 and 40 frames per second now this doesn't sound good on the surface but keep in mind that this was with the constant flamethrower flashes bangs you know flaming knots i mean just effects were going on and on and on constantly and i suspect you average closer to 60 frames per second in, in normal gameplay conditions uh, this game game tends to fluctuate quite a bit so uh, you, def you definitely got to take that into account and then when i switched to the high preset we actually we averaged between 60 and 70 frames per second in, this, in these passes so uh, you're probably looking at closer to 80 or 90 frames per second under the high settings under nor normal circumstances in this game this game's kind of tough on lower end hardware but if you have anything mid-range or up it definitely performs really well so a well optimized title looks beautiful and gory and fun to play Well, there you have it, the four benchmarks, and I would say that this is a pretty solid system. Definitely good for high, you know, high graphic settings, 1080p, ultra in some cases, and um, definitely lots of headroom as far as uh, get, uh, he as far as processing power goes. I think this thing can handle a stronger graphics card. And as a matter of fact, even though I have this on, you know, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist and let go and other sites i'm actually going to swap in the graphics card with the 1080 ti and just use it for my own rig until i sell it uh, i might make a video on that it definitely be interesting to see if the uh, processor is a bottleneck which it most certainly is in some cases but i think they are uh, far and few between and they might not be in you know very pertinent situations so we'll see but uh yeah just thought i'd share this with you so Thanks for watching and till next time.